On today's show, Elon Musk says that your autopilot equipped Tesla will soon be able to commute to work without requiring any input from you at all. Porsche says its all electric Taycan is sold out for the first year of its production. And a Tesla Model 3 performance sets a brand new production electric car record at the WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca in California, USA. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, folks. I hope you're getting ready for some summer fun over the Christmas break. But even though Christmas is just around the corner, the news flow keeps flowing. So let's get on with some of the best stories we have on offer this week. Tesla might be busy getting as many cars to customers over the next few weeks in order to get as many of those US customers eligible for full tax credits as it can. But it's also been busy working on future releases of its autopilot software. And says Elon Musk earlier this week on Twitter, Tesla's built in the past two years will very soon be able to go from your garage at home to parking at work. In other words, tackle your daily commute with no input from you at all. Quote, definitely try navigate on autopilot. It will blow your mind, Musk said in a preceding tweet. Let me know if you can and do. Sometimes when preparing this show, we have a breaking news story that just has to go in. And this week is one example, with Hyundai just announcing official pricing of the Kona Electric in the US. Priced from $36,450 US dollars before incentives, this well-equipped crossover offers an EPA-approved 258 miles of range per charge, 100 kilowatt DC quick charging capability, and while I've not driven it yet, is going to give the Bolt EV, which is... $200 or so cheaper, but offers less standard fit items and range, a real run for its money. It's time for the battle of the mid-price long-range EVs to begin. If you're wondering what to do this weekend, then maybe it's worth checking out the first race of the all-new Formula E season, which should be in full swing around this time the episode airs. Unlike previous years, where battery designs meant drivers had to swap cars mid-race, this year sees a brand new, larger capacity battery that can last the whole race. There's a slew of new teams and race drivers, including the Formula E debut of my buddy Alexander Sims from the UK. So make sure you get involved and good luck to everyone this season. It may be rolling out its Kona Electric around the world, but Hyundai has also been preparing its Nexo fuel cell SUV for launch in limited markets in the US. The Nexo is said to be a decent drive, offering a claimed range of 380 miles per fill, and you can buy it outright. But it's just announced starting sticker price of $59,345, about the same price as a Toyota Mirai, and limited refueling options, just 35 stations in the whole of the state of California, mean very few people are likely to plunk down the cash for one, especially with the just-priced Kona Electric offering more practicality for less. It's official. Porsche has now sold out of the entire first year production of its Taycan electric sports sedan. At least that's according to Porsche CEO Oliver Bloom, who told CNET earlier this month that if everyone who pre-ordered the car ends up buying it, then it will have sold up its entire first year allocation. Europe and the US are expected to get the lion's share of models, although it appears that getting one on the wait list isn't as easy in some countries as it is in others. Either way, while many do prefer a Tesla, it seems Porsche has enough customers willing and able to stump up the cash for its first EV. BMW is full steam ahead with its electrification push, and this week it announced a further investment to the tune of a quarter billion dollars at its Munich production facility in order to ready production lines for the upcoming BMW i4. In announcing the investment, BMW says its Munich factory would require extensive reworking in order to make i4 production a reality, including new sub-production lines, so that it can make i4s on the same main production line as other planned models. Elon Musk made an appearance on 60 Minutes last weekend talking about a whole range of things from Twitter and Tesla's hellish summer to the SEC and possibly buying GM production facilities. The interview itself was pretty good, but Musk took to Twitter shortly after it aired to dispute CBS's edit of the original interview, which cut out what Musk had to say about the hiring of Robin Denholm as chair of Tesla's board and made him sound a little well 
cocky. As a journalist, I feel obliged to note it's hard to include full unedited interviews on air, but it's also not okay to change the narrative in the edit booth. Here's hoping in the future that edits are mutually agreed on. Last week, we shared video of the official crash testing of the Jaguar I-Pace by Euro NCAP, a car which I can categorically say I'm not going to be giving a review of anytime soon because Jaguar has told me it doesn't have a press car I can borrow. Anyway, back to crash testing, and this week it's the turn of the Mercedes-Benz EQC SUV. The car isn't due to launch until next year, and there are internal Mercedes-Benz tests that it's published rather than official Euro NCAP ones. But, says Benz, it's a demonstration of how well its first electric SUV performs in a crash. I'm going to wait and see what official crash tests say, though, before making my mind up. Alongside everything else it's been doing, Tesla's continued refining prototype semis, driving across the US and using them to transport batteries between Tesla's Gigafactory in Reno, Nevada and its production lines in Fremont, California. This week, a black Tesla semi was spotted getting a quick charge at a Tesla supercharger by Model X owner Nader Assemi, who filmed the full-size rig backing up to the Kettleman City supercharger. Apparently, the truck hooked up to five superchargers at the same time, which translates to an instantaneous charge rate in excess of half a megawatt. That's some serious electron flow. These days, pretty much every type of vehicle you can think of is being electrified and automated, and this week, John Deere took a step towards a brave new agricultural future by unveiling an all-electric 100 kilowatt autonomous tractor. Unlike most electric vehicles, though, it draws its power from the electricity grid and uses a long cable to deliver that power. Yes, I know extension cord joke time. But in a field application where the tractor is going up and down in rows or round in circles, having a long cable isn't a major issue, and farms do tend to have high power electrics anyway. The challenge I see? How you get the tractor to the field in the first place and find a place to plug in. Hmm. A couple of months ago, I asked on this channel why the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid wasn't selling so well, and some of you gave me your ideas. Some of them revolved around advertising, so when I heard that Mitsubishi had a new ad out to promote the Outlander plug-in hybrid, complete with snow and winter sports, I just had to take a look. It's a cute ad with some famous freestyle skiers added into the mix. But rather than use the original internal combustion and electric drivetrain noises, the ad agency behind the video added a really fake set of noises. It really spoils it. And finally, the WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca is one of my all-time favorite race courses, and for many years, EV enthusiasts have tried to set their fastest possible times on the course. Not so long ago, Faraday Future, remember them, set a new claimed production EV record, but since the Faraday Future hasn't entered into production, well, it's a moot point. This week, however, there was a new record set by Cameron Rogers behind the wheel of a Tesla Model 3 performance. The time, 1 minute 41.28 seconds. Nice one, Cameron. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye for the week. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And as always, if you've got some feedback, well, send it our way. In the meantime, I hope that you enjoy the rest of your Sunday, that you have a great week ahead, and I will be back as usual next week. You can find out when we upload new Ecotech goodness by hitting the bell below. And while you're at it, don't forget to switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Go on, do your bit, and help keep your personal electricity emissions as low as possible by getting your electricity free of nasty greenhouse gases. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.